Hello, my name is Venki Krishnan. I'm a faculty member at TIFR Center for Applicable Mathematics in Bangalore, India. I'm going to talk on an introductory course in PDEs with applications. Um, so the part one, um, I'm actually going to focus on four uh, PDEs. And one of them is a first order PDE, which is a transport equation. And the other, are, the other three are uh, second order PDEs. Um, the, Laplace, heat, and wave equation. Um, so the first part is going to be more about modeling aspects, how it actually comes up in certain uh, practical applications. So uh, first we are going to focus on the transport equation, then we go to the Laplace equation, then we go to the heat equation, and then we go to the wave equation. All right, so let's first consider the transport equation. So uh, we actually get into the aspects of uh, derivation of transport equation, how it actually comes up in certain modeling. So we, for instance, one uh, classic example is uh, in terms of modeling traffic flow. So we think of traffic flow on a highway as a type of fluid flow. And uh, let's say at, 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 at any point X on the highway and at, at, in the time T, let u of x t denote the density of vehicles at x and at time t. Okay, so the density can be thought of as the number of vehicles per unit length. All right. Now let f of x t denote the flow rate of vehicles passing through the location x and at time t. So this can be thought of as flux. Actually, this this will come up uh, later on in in the other type of modeling that we consider as well. Now consider any two locations, x1 and x2. And at time t, the total number of vehicles between these two locations is going to be given by a sum. And in the continuum, it's going to be an integral. So what is that integral? So the total number of vehicles is going to be the integral from x1 to x2 of u of xt dx. So this is at time t. And um, we can get the rate of change of uh, the number of vehicles between these two locations by considering the derivative. So what we have is this derivative, d by dt of integral from x1 to x2, u of x t dx. So now let's assume that we can interchange the integral and the derivative. So we have x1 to x2, du by dt dx. Okay. Now um, let's for simplicity assume that the highway is a closed system. Okay, so which means that I'm assuming that the total number of vehicles remain a constant. Or in other words, there is no vehicles entering and exiting the highway. So this is a very simplistic model. And then what we have. So then we then if we consider the rate of change of um, the number of vehicles between these two locations, x1 and x2, which is given by the left over here. So this is going to be given by the, um, the flow rate uh, at x1, which is the number of vehicles entering at x1 at time t minus or less the rate of vehicles exiting at uh, out of the point x2 at time t. So that's given by the right, f of x1 t minus f of x2 t. So now what I can do is I can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to write this part over here, which is f of x1 t minus f of x2 t as an integral. So that's going to be a space integral. So this is actually going to be integral uh, actually, it's the negative of the integral from x1 to x2 of df by dx, uh, dx. So then now what I do is I just take that integral, put it to the right hand side. So this is exactly what I get. So I get integral from x1 to x2, du by dt plus df by dx, the whole dx is equal to zero. So now, since this is true for all x1, x2, we must actually have the du by dt plus df by dx is equal to zero. Now, um, uh, we'll see why this is true in a more general context when I consider uh, the second order different um, uh, PDEs. So, um, since, so right now, just let's take it for granted that if this is true for all x1 and x2, then we actually have that the integrand must be equal to zero. Okay. Now, um, you see that in the previous equation over here, so this is... Um, so one is actually an uh, uh, a derivative involving u, and the second is actually a derivative involving f. But you know the thing is, in practice, we expect some relation between this f and this u, that is the flow rate and this u. So 
let's what what we actually do is let's write f in terms of u okay so let's say it's some function g of u and in general this function g is actually going to be a nonlinear function okay now uh, which means that the relationship between the density of vehicles and the flow rate is going to be in in practice or in in uh, uh, in general going to be nonlinear so let's consider the following example. So for instance, if the density of vehicles is small, then the flow rate or the flux is going to be high, which means that you know the, 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 the vehicles are going to pass through a location X at a greater um, you know, frequency, right? Whereas if the density of vehicles is near the maximum capacity of the highway, then the flow rate is going to be slow because it's going to be like a bumper to bumper traffic. Okay, so suppose, you know, in the very idealistic situation, if you have that there is a linear relationship between these two, or in other words, if this G is actually a linear function of U, then we actually get the standard, the transport equation, that is du dt plus du dx is equal to zero. Okay, but as an another example, so suppose if G of U is actually equal to U square by two, then we actually get what is called as a Burgers equation. So this is actually a nonlinear equation, which because of this U du by dx over here. So we actually get this Burgers equation. So this is, um, so I'm going to um, switch gears now and then talk about um, other type of uh, PDEs that come up in practice. Uh, but, you know, this is one of the, uh, the, the, uh, first order PD is one of the first first order PDs that one studies uh, when when trying to understand um, partial differential equations. Okay, so now let's come to Laplace equation. Okay, so um, I actually want to give the derivation of the Laplace equation, or, or in other words, the modeling of the Laplace equation, how it actually comes up in in practical applications. So for that. Let's consider omega to be a medium, and let's assume that the density of some quantity u is in equilibrium in omega. Okay, so what do we so so what are the some quantity or the density of some quantity of interest? It could be temperature, it could be chemical concentration, or it could be electric potential, etc. So since we have equilibrium, so the net amount of quantity flowing out of any volume in the medium is equal to zero. So I, I have a picture over here. So this the bigger domain is omega and I, I take any volume u. So the, the net amount of quantity flowing out of this particular volume u is equal to zero. And you can take any, any sub volume and it's a, the, the net amount of quantity uh, is going to be equal to zero, okay? So as before, we define the flux as the net amount of u um, flowing through any surface, okay? So now, since the, um, the uh, uh, quantity of interest is in equilibrium, right? So the net flux uh, going passing through any surface is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so with this as the um, hypothesis, let's see what we get. So now let u contained in omega be a subset. So let's, I take this u over here. And since the net flux of u through the boundary of any such u is zero, we get that f dot nu, where nu is the outer unit normal, uh, is equal to zero. So this is actually um, the integral of f dot nu uh, ds of x is equal to zero, where ds of x is the surface measure on du. And f is actually what we call as the flux vector field. So now you see that this is an integral over du, right? But we can actually convert this to, to an integral over u by the Gauss theorem from advanced calculus that you may have seen. So if let's say let F is a vector field, F be a vector field, right? So then what the Gauss theorem says is that the divergence of F uh, integrated over the volume U is the same as F dot nu du, okay? So this is so the right-hand side quantity here is the net flux. So now what we have done is using this theorem, we have converted this equal to zero to the, uh, the integral of the divergence is equal to zero, okay? Now recall that for a vector field F, uh, which has n components, F1, F2 up to Fn, then the divergence of F is summation I is equal to one dFi by dxi. Okay, so now what we have achieved is that, so what we have is that the integral of the divergence of F over any uh, subset of omega is equal to zero. 
So now recall that we actually did something in the transport equation in the 1D case as well. So we claim that from here, we claim that the divergence of F itself is equal to zero. So there we actually claim that, that du by dt plus df by dx, that's equal to zero because it is true for any x1 and x2. So here, since this is true for any u contained in omega, then we have actually that the divergence of f itself is equal to zero. Okay, so as promised, so let us see why this is the case. Okay, so why is it true that if this is true for any u, that the divergence of f, the integral of divergence of f is equal to zero for any u contained in omega, then the divergence, then the integrand itself is equal to zero. Okay, so we can argue this by contradiction. And let's, for simplicity, um, assume some regularity on the vector field f, okay? So for instance, we can assume that the divergence of f is at least a continuous function. So then if the divergence of f is not equal to zero, so let's argue by contradiction. So suppose the divergence of f is not equal to zero at some point, let's say p, then what we have, then the divergence of f is not going to be equal to zero um, in a neighborhood of p. Now, Let's assume that the divergence of f is actually positive. If it's not positive, then it's, it's going to be negative because I'm assuming it's non-zero. So then you can either consider minus of f or, or, or the same sign. So without loss of generality, we can assume that the divergence of f is greater than zero at some point. P. Then by continuity, then the divergence of f is going to be bigger than zero in a small ball uh, around uh, P. Right? Let's say the small ball is of radius r. So then what we have, so then, then the, since the integrand itself is positive, then the integral of uh, divergence of f over bp of r, that's going to be bigger than zero. But my, um, what we have, um, the, the modeling that we have arrived at is that the divergence of f over any subset is equal to, the integral of the divergence of f over any subset is equal to zero. So this is a contradiction to the fact that through any volume, u contained in omega, then the divergence of f is equal to, the integral of the divergence of f is equal to zero. So that's a contradiction, right? So therefore, we must have that the, that the divergence of f itself is identically zero. Okay, so if we assume that the flux is proportional to the gradient, but with, this, but with a negative sign, since uh, the temperature flow, for instance, is from higher to lower temperatures, then what we have is that, that the flux is going to be um, uh, proportional to gradient, but with a negative sign. So let's say C here is positive, with, but I have put a minus sign over here. So then I have that F is actually equal to minus C gradient of U. And recall that the gradient of U is a vector field, which is given by du dx1 all the way up to du dx. So that th these are the N components. Now you see that, so since we have that the divergence of F is equal to zero, now, if I substitute that f is equal to minus c uh, gradient of u, then what we get? What we get is that, so this has, a, this has one derivative, the divergence of f has one more derivative. So we actually get a second derivative and it's quite easy to see that we actually arrive at the following equation. That is d square u dx1 square plus all the way up to d square u dx1 square is equal to zero in omega. So this is the famous uh, Laplace equation, and we denote this by del u, yeah, the del, uh, the, the triangle u or del u, which is d square u dx1 square all the way up to d square u dx1 square. Okay, so now next we come to the heat equation. Okay, so what we have, so what we have is that this is actually a generalized version of what we considered just uh, in, in the Laplace equation context. So we consider a non-equilibrium situation. So um, as before, let you denote the density of some quantity of interest. So for instance, you know, uh, heat in a medium omega. It could also be the density of concentration of some chemical in a medium omega. Now, physically, the total um, heat, right? Because this is uh, uh, the quantity U is the density. So the total amount of heat in a subset U is going to be then given by an integral, which is the integral of U dx over a certain volume U contained in omega. Now U, um, let me emphasize that U is actually a function of X, uh, the, 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 the point as well as at, at a certain time. Okay, so this U here is actually a function of both X and T. Okay, 
So now what we have, so now the rate of change of heat. So this is the, the you denote the density of heat in a medium at a certain time. So now the rate of change of heat in U is going to be given by a derivative, the derivative with respect to time. So that, then I put d by dt of integral u dx. The, the integral u dx is going to be the total heat in that particular subset or the volume uh, contained in omega. Okay, so now we expect that the rate of change of heat correspond to the negative of the net flux through the surface du. So why is that? Because if the flux is positive, then you know in, in, in practice what we see is that if the flow rate is positive, then the uh, concentration goes down or the temperature goes down. So therefore, if the flow rate is positive, then there is actually decrease. So this should correspond to, that explains the minus sign. So what we have, so what we have is that d by dt of integral u dx is equal to minus of f dot nu ds of x. So this was the flux, the net flux. Okay, so now put this, uh, the derivative inside and put, uh, bring this, in, um, um, transform the integral over du using Gauss theorem. And let's see what we get. So by Gauss theorem, what we have. So what we have is that this quantity here, that is f dot nu ds of x can be written in terms of an integral over u. And so we get that d by dt or du by dt, the integral of u of the integrand, which is du by dt, is actually equal to the negative of the integral of the divergence of f. Okay, now put this to the other side. And what we get, we get that ut plus divergence of f dx is equal to zero, but for any uh, subset u contained in omega. Okay, now as before, let's assume that f is actually the uh, proportional or negatively proportional to the gradient of u. Okay, so this is the same assumption as before. Then what we get, so then I substitute, so the divergence has um, the sum of dfi dxi and f is actually the uh, proportional or negative proportional to the gradient vector field. So if I substitute it back in over here, what we get is we get that ut minus c um, Laplace u uh, is equal to zero, but for any substitute. So now using the same argument as before, what we get is that you have ut minus c Laplace u or del u is equal to zero. Now uh, we can adjust the proportionality constant so that c is actually equal to one. So in which case we have the standard heat equation, ut minus del u or ut minus Laplace u is equal to zero. So this is the uh, heat equation. Now, um, finally, let's come to the wave equation. Okay, so uh, let's see what's the derivation of the wave equation. So the wave equation models the displacement of an elastic medium such as a string, membrane, etc. okay. So in this case, let u of xt, uh, so the u is actually going to be a function of both position as well as time as in the heat case, okay? Um, so in this case, oh, actually I forgot to tell you one thing. So in the, in the uh, heat equation case, so you have ut minus c Laplace u is equal to zero. So now let's say you have the equilibrium situation, which means that the quantity doesn't change with time. Okay, so the quantity of whatever that you're measuring is doesn't change with time, which means that the ut part, this part vanishes. All that you get is that Laplace u is equal to zero. So therefore the heat equation is actually a generalization, the non-equilibrium version of what happens in the uh, Laplace, the Laplace equation setup. Okay, so if, the, if it does not change with time, then this ut, the derivative is equal to zero. So this is the equilibrium situation. So um, I just wanted to mention this, I forgot here. Okay, so now uh, let u of xt denote the displacement of a point x in omega and at time t. And uh, as before, so the total displacement is going to be given by the in, an integral. Okay, so the integral, uh, the total displacement, let's say in a region u is going to be given by an integral. So integral over u, u of xt dx. Now the acceleration here is going to be the second derivative, right? So it's going to be d squared dt squared of the total displacement, which is u of x t dx. So now the net force. Okay. Now I must. I'm going to assume that the uh, the model or the sorry the the object of interest, let's say a membrane or string or whatever it is, is of unit mass density. Okay. So the net force acting on u 
contained in omega, right, is going to be given by uh, some quantity analogous to the net flux, which is minus integral du f dot nu ds of x. Now, um, the where f is the force acting. So the negative sign here is because of the fact that if it's an elastic object, then the tendency is for the object to come to the equilibrium situation. Okay, so that explains the negative sign over here. Okay, so now as before, we play the same game, right? So, so what we have? So we have that integral. So in this case, this is equal to this. Right? So we have d square u dt square, the, the integral over u d square u dt square is equal to minus integral over du f dot nu ds of x. But now again, I use Gauss theorem, right? So if I again use Gauss theorem, then I can convert this integral over du to an integral over u itself, but I consider the divergence, okay? So that's exactly what I have. So I have that utt is equal to minus divergence of f. Right, and uh, um, so the, since actually you have the integral of utt minus um, uh, uh, sorry, just one second. So you have so so you convert this f dot nu to an integral over u, right? So you have that d square u dt square plus uh, divergence of f over the whole u is equal to zero. But since this is true for all u we get that utt plus divergence of f is equal to zero, or in other words, utt is equal to minus divergence of f. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to convert this into a, a, a PDE involving just one unknown function only. So what we can do is we can make some simplifications. For instance, if, um, if the displacement is small, then one may assume that f is actually approximately uh, proportional to gradient, right? And what we have is that f is equal to minus c Laplace u. And so, and then you make some simplifying assumptions or you make some adjustments to the constants. So assuming that c is actually equal to one, then what we have is that if you substitute utt plus divergence of f is equal to zero and to this f, if you substitute minus c gradient of u, and then you again take the divergence, you end up with utt minus Laplace u is equal to zero. So this is what is called as the wave equation. So um, this is part one, and uh, we'll actually go into some properties about Laplace equation in part two.